so far. The crew has cleared every hurdle naysayers have placed in their way. Columbus would be home to one of the ten inaugural teams. Columbus has outperformed much larger cities. The true success indicator has been from the fans. Uh, so, Tommy, welcome to the club. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, so, why don't you kind of just give us a, a quick bio and, and all the things that you're involved in with Atlanta United so our listeners can uh, kind of act, you know, uh, align with, with where you sit um, with Atlanta. Sure. Uh, a few years ago, uh, Jury South Soccer, we were trying to figure out some new things to do for the season. And a few of us got together and started Twitter Spaces. And Twitter Spaces is an interesting place, um, especially if your team's really bad. And Atlanta United was really bad last year. So mm -hmm. they were three, four-hour therapy sessions afterwards of, you know, people freaking out because, you know, historically this club has been very good. And over the yeah. past few years, they've, they've been garbage. And it's been frustrating. The fans were frustrated. And then at the end of the year, uh, the three of us, Sydney and Tyler and myself, uh, started Scarves and Spikes. And we've been doing uh, the podcast since the beginning of the season and having fun. Since the beginning of this season? Yes. Okay, yeah, we were kind of in the same boat. Like, we, we drummed up this idea, I think, three or four games before the end of last season, which, which ended pretty pretty abruptly for us because we just we couldn't put three points uh, <laughs> on the board uh, seemingly any of those last final weeks, except for maybe one. But... Um, yeah, so it sounds like we're kind of on the same timeline. So, um, so quick plug your, you know, how do how do listeners find your podcast, and are there other places where uh, those folks can find you? Sure, uh, we're on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, uh, Scarves and Spikes. Okay, uh, that's a, that's all three of them. Nice. Okay, and so how did you get affiliated with Atlanta United? So really weird. You know, I'm from Cleveland, so I'm two hours away from you guys. Okay. Uh -huh. And right. I, I never really got into the, the soccer before. And I've been a Falcons fan most of my life. And I flew down, and I see these, these flags everywhere. Atlanta United flags. Like, there's more Atlanta United flags than, uh, let's see, what else? There's more than Braves, Falcons, mm -hmm. you know, Georgia Bulldogs rule all over there. But... It was it was really yeah. weird that I, I see it everywhere. So I go to the stadium uh, for the Falcons game and I see the Atlanta United jersey. I'm like, oh, this is this is a nice jersey. I'm gonna have to pick <laughs> it up next time. I come down next time and it's just a, it's a crazy party. Like I've never been to a tailgate, uh, what an Atlanta United tailgate is, and went to the game, had an amazing time, and I was addicted. And I just started coming down. I, we usually fly down at least one uh, game a season, and. Yeah, I've just it's become an obsession for me. How did you end up in Atlanta in the first place? Like what brought you to the Falcons game or you know, are you originally from Atlanta or have family there? No, my best friend was uh was a Falcons fan, Michael Vick. So this is how long ago this goes back before he was killing <laughs> uh -huh. dogs. Right. And <laughs> so yeah, we we got into him and really I just I chose that team and just started saying, "Okay, well, I'll start following it." So I I've been yeah. following uh Atlanta United since basically the first year. Okay. So you nice. maybe you do, maybe you don't. You tell me. Like, how much do you know about uh, the the game day goings on for the United or for Atlanta United? Or if you don't, if you aren't plugged in there, um, what's the Atlanta United scene like in Cleveland? Like, how do you do games? So down in Atlanta, I mean, like I said, the, the tailgates are, are pretty wild. They have three or four big supporters uh, groups that um, they've been moved around over the past couple of years, but they've got huge parties down there. And then they do the March. Uh, there's also the Home Depot backyard uh, down there. Okay. That's just more of a commercialized family-like area down there for you guys. So you guys, yeah. Yeah. You, you, yeah. I've learned you guys have yeah. all the kids. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> so it's a big yeah. family area, uh, but it's, it's a great time. But here in Cleveland, for me, I've recruited a couple people uh, that watch the games with me, and we just set up and watch the games here. And, uh, you know, Georgia's a huge uh, peach, so I, I do a shot of crown peach. 
uh, at halftime every game. <laughs> nice. uh, and if we win <laughs> afterwards, then maybe I'll do a couple more. But last night it was it was rough. <laughs> last night was uh, yeah. was uh, thrashing, and I I drank about four or five of them. So it was it was a good time. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking for you guys we'll doing this later because I yeah. really yeah. over this morning. <laughs> save a uh, five-one victory against Portland, right? So yeah. Um, so cel- a celebratory thrashing. So, um, all right. So then how much do you know about the, the, uh, supporters network for United? Is it like a bunch of groups that kind of come together? You mentioned the March, is it a unified, you know, how, how integrated is, are, are all those operations and, and how do they work together? Do you know? They're unified as I think as much as they can be from Lee Singh, but then they have a lot of differences. Uh, I've seen the battles on Twitter. Uh, okay. You know, I, yeah. I, they've agreed on different things, political issues, things about how the club is run. And yeah, it's, you know, even, even some of the signings of the players, you know, there's been some controversy on some of the players that have been brought in at times. So they've not always yeah. agreed and some are, are, some are vocal and some aren't. And then they get the ones that are vocal are upset that the ones that aren't vocal are vocal. So it, they go, yeah. they just go back and forth. <laughs> okay. All right. But when you're well, winning, sounds... but when they're winning though, <laughs> they get they come together and yeah. then they're really yeah. happy. Right. It's, yeah, unification and 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 har- harmonization. Um okay, so Atlanta's sitting at the top of the East with uh 10 points. Let's see beats San Jose 2 to 1 and uh tied Toronto 1 to 1, beat Charlotte I think away 3 to 0. Yep. And then beat Portland as I mentioned at home last night five to one um so we were kind of talking before we got started here there's the international break this week that we're, we're not breaking for so um how is atlanta gonna look different this week uh, than it has for the last handful of games where y- y'all have been marching to the top of the table so do you have an hour to get through this because yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot so i mean if you want to start with the starters, you know, up front, uh, Jurgis Yakamakis, yeah. their new DP signing, uh, yes. scored his first goal yesterday. Um, he's going to be out with Greece, so that's starting there. And then mm-hmm. you have Miles Robinson going to the U.S., which was the only MLS player called up, which I thought was interesting. Um, Good. Mm-hmm. Then you have Tiago Amada. The MLS yep. has probably told you a hundred times that he won a World Cup. Um, currently Does he play he's, for Argentina. I feel yeah. like I've heard that yeah. <laughs> only a yeah. hundred times. Uh, right. yeah, but, only, but he, he's, I mean, he's already making a, a, an early run for MLS MVP. I don't know if he's going to be here long enough to actually be able to win that award. Uh, but he's had some goals and if you haven't seen him, he's, I mean, yeah, he's in the upper 90 club. If you saw his, yeah. his set piece, was it a set piece last night? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was nasty. And he scored two uh, set pieces in the the home opener to win it in an extra time, uh, yeah. or stoppage time. So like that that was that was a wild scene. But I mean, he's going to be gone. Uh, we're still going here. You, you've got a lot of guys from the bench. Um, Ronald Hernandez, right back. Uh, Derek Entien. So you guys know yeah. him. Uh, he'll yep. be away at Haiti, yep. and then Louis Abram, the third center back for us it probably should be the starter by the end of the year he's also out so it's it's rare pickings right now and caleb wiley also for the u.s he was gonna be for the under 20 team and atlanta united declined uh him which u.s soccer i see you have the u.s soccer hat but u.s soccer twitter is a whole crazy world yeah, yeah. and they yeah. do not yeah, like atlanta um... united at all oh. no it's so toxic I don't know anything about that. What, what's what's the deal with that? I think they just get upset that, you know, Atlanta United's had a history of not letting players go. Um, and um, non-mandatory windows. And with reason, they've, ha- they've had some issues. A-, a few years ago in the playoffs, we were a game away from MLS Cup. Miles Robinson goes, uh, doesn't play in the game, does some sprints afterwards, useless sprints, yep. and uh, hurts himself and is out for the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, so so suffice to say that uh, the team's going to look different. Um, and the team looked different this year 
from last year as as it is, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe t- uh, you mentioned uh, the the new player from Celtic. Uh, I can't remember his name. Yakamakis. Right yeah, there you go. You got to get a lot of practice. To say it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of practice. It sounds like. Uh, so, uh, um, how many of these guys that are out, or you know, it sounds like a few of them are new to the program, but. Um, do you think it's going to, do you think these guys being out, it's going to affect the, the line uh, the, the, uh, setup and the style of play, or do you think we're just going to kind of plug new folks in? So I think with some of the positions, uh, Miguel Barry, who also played for you guys is yeah. going to be, uh, the starting striker and he's done an okay job. Hasn't scored yet, but he he's been okay. Uh, but Tiago Amada, we don't have a replacement for him right now. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how they set up. Uh, they have uh, Rosetto, who is another midfielder who could possibly step in there, but he's been recovering from an injury. He's been out the last two weeks. So the midfield is going to be a huge question uh, for, for that. Um, Caleb Wiley, who really, when, when you saw the beginning of the year, you thought NTN was going to be the starter, and he came yeah. in to camp with an injury. So he really wasn't able to play in the preseason. And Caleb Wiley, uh, I didn't check it at the end of the night, but he was tied for uh, the most goals in MLS. So that was okay. interesting. And he's 18, I think still. Um, and then the other one on top of that list is Almada who leads the league in goals and assists. So that's going to look yeah. different. The center backs are, are going to, I mean, miles is going to be out. Uh, Abram was going to be probably the second guy he's, he's out. So you're going to have, one veteran in Parada that's going to be starting, and then you're going to probably have a rookie who, uh, Cobb, and I think he's 19 years old, and he hasn't played in MLS yet. So um, it's going to be shaky back there. Okay. And the, the coach is new this year, right? No. So he's been here for – this is his second full season. Um, okay. He came – Pineda came in – after the Watergate incident that they had where Land United's coach wasn't giving him enough water, Heinze. So they oh, ended okay. up uh, firing him. So he came in at the end of the last or two years ago, oh, okay. got him to the playoffs. And so, so do you think that, that the, you know, you mentioned having a tough year last year or they're big, I mean, aside from some of the on-field personnel, what other changes have you seen in this last handful of games uh, from last year? Um, that you think is helping Atlanta uh, on, you know, putting putting goals up and, and seeing results? So I think it's addition by subtraction. You know, just when you say that a team gets rid of Joseph Martinez and they've gotten better, that that's, tells you kind of the situation. I, I've been comparing yeah. it to Ronaldo. I'm a Manchester United fan as well. So I saw how, how Manchester United got really good when they got rid of Ronaldo, right? Yeah. And it's not saying Ronaldo wasn't good, but it, it seemed like it was a toxic environment there. Same with Atlanta United. There was a situation last year where after the end of the game, Joseph flipped a table of chicken and rice um, all over. (laughs) And it was, it was really downhill and you, and you kind of could tell that this was the end of it. And I think that that's, you have a young coach, a a guy that came over from Seattle, no, you know, head coaching experience. And Joseph runs the locker room at that point. And that's gotta be an awkward situation for him. And yeah. now it seems like this team is really they're, – they're playing for each other, which I, I feel last year they weren't. But also the, they led the league, I think, last year in um, man games missed. Like there were just so many guys that were hurt last year. Miles Robinson was out, Brad Guzan, and those are just a couple of the big ones um, that were out. Yeah. Okay. I know we dealt with that. I kind of feel like on and off the last few years, just riddled with injuries. I think it, it was, I don't think it was last year. I think it was the year before where like the whole middle of our season was just, right. was just yeah. bottomed out because we had, you know, half of our team was injured. Lucas Ellerian, I think was injured. Is that is right? Tracy, was that last year or two years ago? Yeah. I, I think know. it was portion of last year too, because I mean, you had our tour being out for an extended period of time. And two yeah. years ago was when Morris went out early with, with when he blew his knee. Yeah. Um, and that was really just the spiral down. But... Yeah. We were coming off, I think, yeah, two years ago, we were coming off the, the MLS cup win. Yeah. Um, yeah. okay. Um, 
Trey, anything, any other questions you want to ask about the game on Saturday before we jump into some, some closing thoughts here? No, I think Tommy had referenced it earlier. I think, you know, there's definitely going to be rain this weekend. Yes. Uh, a few years ago, they were mopping the, the Moffray turf, um, trying to get, letting that game be played. <laughs> the bathrooms yeah. were flooding. My, my, wife tried to go, right. <laughs> my wife tried to go in there and she's like, there's water everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were there. Yeah, so I open, just looked at the open forecast. Cup game, the open cup game. Uh-huh. That that was like an hour and a half rain delay too. I was there for that. Yep. Uh, and it's looking like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are all calling for rain. So, hmm. yeah. So it, it may good, just uh... be like a, a warmer version of our of our soaking wet game that we had in Toronto <laughs> exactly. uh, last week. Okay. All right. So Tommy, we're this season we're doing score predictions. Um I know that and maybe it's not fair to ask you this because uh because of all of the uh variables with the with the international break and and the rain will not make things more uh more predictable, but we want you to put a score on the line. So do you mind giving us one? So I think it's gonna be a draw. Okay. Uh, I'm. I would love that. <laughs> I, me too. I, over over a five to one, I would love. That. Yeah. <laughs> if I were Portland, I would be hoping for a draw. Okay. I, All right. I'm so, say it's what one are you to thinking? One. One, one to one. one. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right, and then, um, yeah. So, a couple other questions I just wanted to ask you. Uh, I, I would ask about like the local market, but I'll ask about yours or if you know in Atlanta, like if if a crew fan was going to an Atlanta game, you know, what's the best bar uh, or play, you know, what's the best venue to, to, to hang out at or, you know, do that kind of thing? Is, is the Atlanta crowd welcoming to visitor fans? You know, what what's that like? Yeah, absolutely. The, the supporters lots, they have fans from other teams hanging out. Um, I was at MLS Cup a few years ago when we won, and it was Portland fans everywhere, and everybody embraced them in, and they had fun. And for me, you know, I just found the place. I didn't know anybody, and I came out with, like, 15 friends yeah. that I still talk to. So it, it's it's a fun time. The bar area over there is, is a little weird. There's not a lot of – there's a few bars over there, but it's, it's nothing special. If you really want to enjoy your time before a game, check the supporters' lots out. Um, even and then if you if you have kids and you know or just not really big into the drinking then the um, the Home Depot backyard right behind the stadium is a great time. Okay, anything else that uh, visitors should know if they're going to Mercedes Benz? Is there like a parking nightmare, or you have to like you know are there are there other things that that someone should know about if they were planning a trip down there? Uh, parking's a pain, absolutely. But I would I get there early because there's a lot to really see in that stadium. Um, it's huge, mm-hmm. and yeah. there's there's hidden gems all across it. Okay, I forgot to ask. Are you coming down this weekend? I will be there. Awesome. All right. Maybe you guys. I have can not missed the Columbus game, uh, an Atlanta Columbus game since the start. Yeah. So I I will try to make it every time. But man, that's the rain has just become a joke now with us it's like yeah you know it's gonna rain at, at some point yep no yeah no it's 100 percent. It, it's gonna rain yeah and last year there was a delay too it was supposed to start at like four o'clock and i think it ended up like starting at like seven ish or something like that yes there was lightning I mean, in there. The yeah, that's is, what it was that's yeah. the the kicker is we do have you know the the leaking roof for um to keep us halfway dry but um we yeah, get leaked on is, all the time so we're all they, they hide all the Atlanta supporters in the back, uh, in the back corner, and I was like, "Oh, we're covered." No, the exact spot no. we sit every time it leaks on us. <laughs> mm, interesting. Wonder if that's like a, a a result of sabotage. If someone had gone up and drilled a bunch of tiny holes in the roof up there, <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> all right, well, uh, guys, yeah, keep, I, I'm not in Columbus. I'm in Chicago, but. Um, Trey, yeah, you guys should try and meet up with Tommy while while you're yeah, there. Yeah, w- um, you know, me and two or three of the other guys will be right above 121, 122, um, just on the west side of the stadium, that side of Nordek, like standing right above. Um, 
I'll probably have this hat on, and Hawes will have an upper 90 crew jersey on, probably. Yeah. So stop by. Say hi. I love the area Sounds down there. Good. I come down for Blue Jackets games all the time. So, like, that whole area, that whole area over there is just so nice. Like, compared to, to what Matt Free was, and, like, they're kind of just in the middle of nowhere. And then you go we, into... Yeah. We love the... Um, what do you want to call it? The nostalgia of old Moffrey Stadium and, like, being the tailgate and the fun part of doing that. But moving it downtown where you have multiple bars and they're, they're setting up tailgate areas now for um, certain supporter groups are starting to do that black flag social. And, um, you know, they're really starting to make it a home down there with the different things you can do, which is wonderful. You know, if you want to go to a bar, go to a bar. If you want to go to a restaurant, go to a restaurant. You know, if you want to pay $6, park, pay $6, pay 20, pick your poison. Um, they've really, it's, it's a cool area down there. Yeah. It's a beautiful stadium and it, it's, you know, I, I've been to Cincinnati too. I've checked that one out, and I, I like your guys a lot better. And we like you more now too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Tommy. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep in touch, and um, maybe we can do this again uh, when we're we're down in Georgia. For sure. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, thanks Tommy. Yep. Hey, yeah, don't Tommy, real, you, real quick. Uh, yeah, don't. If, before don't close you, your browser. <laughs> yeah, but don't close your tab after you leave. Yeah, you're done. So that your audio will finish uploading if it hasn't already. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can hit the leave button. You just don't hit the don't close the, the uh, browser tab. Anything yeah. else that you wanted us to know for you know advertisement or you know whatever just before we sign off here? No, I th- think that's about it. Okay. Yeah, thanks for having me. I've I've been yeah, I followed the crew as well, you know, just being here, but you know, it's it's weird. I, I at least I've seen this team grow a little bit. My first game, you know, was at Matt Free and I don't know, there weren't a lot of people there, so I was like, "Oh, this that was my first MLS experience, like really be- yeah. besides Atlanta." And I was like, "Oh, this is kind of it." But like I went down last year, you know, check out the new stadium and like it, seems like a different vibe yeah now. when when were you there the uh the columbus the columbus oh maffrey uh i was there for open cup i was there uh there's another huge rain delay like won, which year one. i mean oh Probably 16 17 16 yeah i mean both i think two years you guys were still there yeah, uh, yeah well, we were there for really a while i don't think we were at at the new one until 21 Oh yeah, you know what? Okay, so yeah, there was then there was the rain, the the, the mop, the mop f- field game that was crazy. Where it started off as rain yeah. that turned into snow. It took me, you know, it's a two hour drive from Cleveland to Columbus. That drive home because yeah. it turned to ice was like a five and a half hour oh. ride home. Ouch! Yeah, I stopped okay. at Waffle House and just had to sober up because I couldn't. Right, it yeah. was just terrible. Well, I don't know. Yeah, the the whole like uh, Anthony Precourt thing really sucked all the life out of yeah it's amazing uh, what owner investment out of the yeah just do. the the whole game experience our our fan i mean i moved in 2016 i think but mm-hmm. man it was like fourteen thousand people a game ten thousand yeah twelve thousand ten thousand it was like the whole upper deck was just completely empty yeah. and uh yeah it was it was kind of a buzzkill um, but anyway, but I yeah, went it was to the cool, though, like in like all the save the, the crew stadium, stuff, yeah. yeah, like all mm-hmm. the save the crew. I come down there all the time yeah. for work. I, uh, we do some work for the Ohio attorney general. So I'm always down in the Columbus area and like just seeing all the, the save the crew stickers and everywhere. But that was, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks again. And then, yeah, let's, you know, m- next time we're playing, I haven't looked at the schedule recently, but um, love to have you back and, and catch up and, and do this again. Cool. Well, okay. Thank you guys. Awesome. Appreciate it. Very good. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tommy. See you. See you. Thanks, everyone, for joining the club. We hope you'll listen next week and every week. 
even in the off season, to celebrate or commiserate. We'll save you a seat. If you like this podcast, please give us five stars and subscribe. You can email us at upper90clubpod at gmail.com. That's upper90clubpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at upper90clubpod. Go crew!